After an on-air panic attack, ABC's Dan Harris went on a personal journey. And lucky for us, he took us all along. He chronicled it in the best-selling book, 10% Happier. And now he has a mini meditation and mindfulness empire. He's got another book. He has podcasts. He has a newsletter. He has a movement. And he joins us now. <laughs> Hi. I, I, <laughs> Did I'm, you realize? That I always say to my wife, what's it like to be married to your spiritual leader? It <laughs> doesn't go well, as you might imagine. I don't think that's what she signed up for. <laughs> no. <laughs> when did you realize that you actually had a business and not just a good story of your personal journey? You know, it took me a while. Shortly after the book came out, which was almost six years ago, I was approached by a couple of entrepreneurs from Boston, tech entrepreneurs, and they asked me to help them make a meditation app, which became the 10% Happier Meditation app. And so I've been working on it for a long time, but I don't think I really believed, I don't think I allowed myself to believe that there was a real business here until recently. Now that we have 30 employees, it's been hard for me to ignore. And it feels like, you know, the, the mindfulness movement, however you want to characterize it, um, has, you know, aside from your own project, organically grown in the last couple of years. Yeah. And as you hear from your users and talk to other folks, you know, you speak a lot, what seems to you to be driving that in the culture? Because there's obviously some kind of low level, perhaps high level anxiety that we're all feeling and we're all trying to seek solutions. I think you just put your finger on it. We've seen, we, we're seeing really epidemic levels of anxiety, depression, suicide addiction and I think there are many drivers political polarization uh, uh, opioids uh, technology social media many many drivers and just sort of the isolation of modern life and as a consequence people are looking around for solutions and w one of the positive things that's happened is that meditation while it's millennia old now has a, a robust body of scientific evidence behind it. And that has allowed a whole new generation of people to adopt it. How do you advise people to get into that mindset of being able to just take the time out to do the meditation? I think especially here in New York City, city, city specifically, there's a lot of emphasis on just grind all the time, work longer than 40 hours. So how do you advise people to not only think about considering this, doing this type of activity, but actually taking the time out to do so? Are you asking for a friend? Oh, uh, it might be. <laughs> His name is Brian. <laughs> no, I mean, this is the, this is the big problem. People really, this is what I hear all the time. I get it, Harris, you know, maybe you're right about this meditation thing, but I don't have time for this. So there are two little mantras I've developed and, and in part with there's this little company you might have heard of, they're called Apple. And we, my company, 10% Happier, this tiny little minnow has a relationship with Apple where we every year do an, a challenge for 150,000 employees at Apple. It's a month long thing uh, where the, during the month of October, we uh, help their employees meditate most days. So th that actually gets to my one of my two little mantras. One of them is daily-ish. If you aim to do it most days instead of every day, then you're more likely, I think, for the habit to stick. And then the other thing is, the other little phrase I have, little slogan, is one minute counts. So the, what, the challenge we give to the folks at Apple is, can you meditate 25 out of 31 days for at least a minute? minute. And that we find... Uh, I can't give the stats out, but we find that the buy-in is really robust. You've been in video for a long time, so doing television. But now, meditation, at least when I do it, I just, it's just audio. Yeah. And you have the podcast, and that we've been covering the podcast economy. Why do you think that podcasts, they're almost like the new self-help book. Why do they work so well? in this area of trying to calm yourself or be a better person? What's the fit? Intimacy. They're right in your head. And I mean, radio has always been an intimate format. They call it theater for the mind. It does you know, provoke your visual cortex, even though it's not visual. But the ability we have to get right into your ear right into your head wherever you are. People are listening on the subway, in the car, um, you know, while they're doing uh, stuff around the house. For me, I listen to podcasts while I'm getting ready for work, et cetera, while I'm stretching after a, a workout. That is, the, you're really getting you in your life. And I think that intimacy is what gives people like me the power to say things that have influence. Can I just the news business? Say that again. Can I ask you about the news business? Yes, you could ask me anything. Well, you want. I mean, because we talk about intimacy and, and yeah. things that are there, and you know, we're in the news business trying to figure out a way to reach our consumers, and they're changing their habits. Um, when you look at the way things have changed, I, I guess the question to you is, 
Have things really changed dramatically in the last five years, or am I just experiencing that way as someone whose personal career has changed a lot in the last five years in terms of what consumers want, how they get it, what stories are being covered, how they're being covered, because um, it feels paradigmatically new, but I, I'm, I'm curious if, if you feel the same way. Well, I mean, I think these are trends that have been going for a long time where you see people you know, wanting information whenever it's, they want the information. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to pause for a second because I'm thinking of a great moment from The Daily Show about 10 years ago, back when John Stewart was hosting. They sent a correspondent to the New York Times and he held up the physical paper and he said to the editor of the New York Times, did anything in here happen today? <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the, the desire for it's information. Probably, it's probably, uh, what's, what's his name? John Oliver. John Oliver. Sounds oh, like, right. It wasn't John Oliver. It was, it was Samantha Bee's husband. Okay. Um, and I'm forgetting his Jason name. Jason Jones. 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 Yes, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I love you, Jason, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> the, my point being, I think these trends have been going for a while, and people really want information right now. And so that's a, that's a, a, a massive opportunity for people in the news business, but it's also really a, a big challenge because, it, for example, if you're a traditional broadcaster the way ABC News is, how do you serve an audience that already has the headlines by the time right. they come to you? Mm -hmm. And so we've done a lot of thinking about how can we provide context, how can we provide analysis, how can we give you a, a richer, more, more nuanced picture of the news than you would otherwise get. And uh, you also have a documentary out talking about nuanced and richer uh, on the Amazon. There's so much to talk with you about. Dan Harris is ABC News anchor, author of 10% Happier. Thank you for coming in. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.